so appreciate that she is here with us. She's also here with uh, one of our wonderfully supportive volunteers acting as MC, and that is Susan Gribus. Um, I hope, I think some of you already know Jackie and um, how she's been part of the Spencertown community for many years. And she's an illustrious author, illustrator of many, many wonderful children's books. And she's here today to share some of her artistic expertise. And before we start, I just want to really give a nice thank you shout out to our sponsors, um, Metswood Insurance, Hudson River Bank and Trust Foundation, and also Stewart Shops for supporting this workshop. So without further ado, Jackie, take it away. Hi, everybody. Happy holidays. Thank you, to you too. All. And uh, I recognize a lot of your faces. <laughs> so um, I'm going to shift the camera a little bit and put you on so you can see both me and my paper. So um, what I want to make sure you have are uh, a pencil with an eraser and um, maybe several sheets of regular copy paper is fine. If you want to work a little bigger, that's fine too. Um, we're going to be designing a book cover again today. So um, we want to work in the vertical landscape. I shouldn't say landscape, a vertical view. So we're going to leave the top part for our title and the bottom section for our illustration. And uh, basically what we'll do is develop a character together um, and out of that development comes a possible story to write and illustrate on your own later. So um, book covers are very uh, important to the, the um, to gather your reader in and make them want to read your book. Um, so we have to have a, a fun title to go along with our uh, illustration and then um, uh, of, of course a really fun character that we can uh, work on together. So um, what I'd love to start with is uh, since we're going to be working in pencil after the workshop you're um, welcome to go go ahead and color it in and um, any way you want to or try different views or uh, different scenes from your story. Um, so this is just sort of a, a starting point to write a story together. I would love, because it's in smack dab in the middle of the holidays, to do something with uh, cold weather creatures. And of course, I think about the Arctic and all the cool creatures that live in the cold climates. But I also can't help but think about the Yeti, the uh, Bigfoot, or the abominable snowman, and how maybe we could work him into the story somehow, him or her. And um, so let's start maybe by um, thinking up a uh, character to build our story around. And I like to combine different animal parts or so maybe the first person I'm looking at, Anna. Hi, Anna. You want to suggest a head that we can start with? I think we should do a gingerbread man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. So let's start. We're going to make them kind of big. And I think I'll make him running because that will give us like an action thing, which is really good to do for covers. So gingerbread men are pretty fun and basic to, to uh, draw. So we're going to start with the running. I'm going to start with, let's do the head. Okay, so the head is basically just the letter U or the letter C kind of rounded. So notice I'm leaving a lot of room for my title. And then just about a, a little bit higher than the middle of the paper, I'm going to draw that upside down letter U for our gingerbread guy's head. A 
I'm gonna continue with an arm. Are you guys ready to do an arm? All right, so I'm gonna take that same line and I'm gonna follow it out like he's running. Like, yeah, I'm running. And then this arm is going to be come out and go down like he's running really fast. See how it has a nice swoop to it from one arm to the other. He looks gingerbready already. Gingerbready already. That could be a song. So, okay, so what just I just thought of is that he's in deep snow and it might be really hard for him to move through deep snow. So let's draw him. I'm gonna make it come down and make this leg come out. Just the top part of his leg, okay? Because I wanna make like he's in deep snow. And maybe there's like little bits of snow like, you know how when you're running in the snow and just like when you're splashing in water, instead of splashes, we have little pieces of snow. And then this is leg is going in. He's having a hard time getting through the snow, isn't he? Because it's so deep. I'm wondering, does he, does he have like a snowsuit on or was he at a party and he's dressed up as something or uh, what could we do to make him unusual that might help make our story interesting? Anybody have any ideas about how he could be dressed up? Or if you have an idea about where, he, where he's running from or what he's running from. Is there any ideas on that? That could help us also with what he looks like, what he's wearing. Anybody have any ideas about what's happening to our poor gingerbread man who's having a terrible time getting through the deep snow? A hungry polar bear is chasing him? Could be a hungry polar bear. Let's see, let's make a little list. I'm gonna take a separate piece of paper just to make a list. Hungry. You guys don't have to write this down. I'm doing it for me. Polar bear. Anybody else have an idea? Anybody? How about it, John? Got any ideas? Army of penguins. An army of penguins? You want me to draw an army of penguins? <laughs> well, you really like to challenge me, don't you, John Miles? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> army of penguins. Anybody else? If we think about our, our uh, gingerbread man, he was, he was made by this couple, did they live on a farm or something? And he jumped up out of the oven and said, run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. So maybe he escaped because he didn't want to be eaten so he's running from the house. So that's another possibility. He's running from the house, running from the cook, the baker, running from the baker. And maybe he's got a little Christmas hat on, maybe he, yeah, he didn't get out of the house in time. So let's just do his gumdrops because we know not my gumdrop buttons. You remember that from Shrek? <laughs> so, um, and then here is his, oh no, his mouth.
Now I'm going to make his eyes looking back behind him because something's chasing him. We don't know if it's polar bear. We don't know if it's the army of penguins. We don't know if it's the baker lady, but something is after him. So I'm gonna make two eyes like this and make his eyes going, looking backwards and he's worried. These are worried eyebrows when they're off to the side. Now here's another thing that we can do to make our gingerbread man, woman, child look a little more um, 3D. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make him look like he is thick, almost like how you make a block letter. You double side it uh, only on one side. So anywhere underneath and off to the right, you will see him double-sided. And if you want, you can make some shadow. To show that that is turning a corner and going back in space behind our gingerbread guy. Is there anything else that we could do to him to make him a little more interesting and original? Well, could he be wearing a hat or have a hairdo or holding something or something that would maybe be used in the story? He's being chased by something. He's running to get away or hide or is he running to get help? Or anybody have any ideas? I thought a hat would be good. A hat. Your, your hat is so cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's like my festive. Uh, I I my festive animal hat. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw a leopard one. <laughs> um, so yeah, he could have a hat on. So let's do that and. Um, We'll give him a little elf hat. How about that? And that way could be kind of like mine. I'm going to draw the rim. Now my, because I don't have a pencil and I have um, a Sharpie, I can't erase these lines. So what I'm gonna do is like make it so it's um, kind of textured like my hat is, only I'm not making it like leopard spots. But this way it covers up my my inability to erase those lines under there. So there's that part of the hat. And then here's this, this part. You can do some texture with that. Okay, there's this hat. So if he's got an elf hat on, where could he be? What if he, what if he's in the North Pole and he was trying he, he was trying to help make toys for Christmas. Maybe that's what he wanted to do. You see how ideas can come from this? We've got a gingerbread man running through the snow. Could be a gingerbread girl. If you want to make it a girl, you can just kind of make some longer hair coming out. Uh, she lives in the North Pole. How about names for her? Ginger. Ginger. <laughs> Thanks, Sue. <laughs> Ginger. What's another name? How about everybody give their name? Not necessarily your name, but a name for our gingerbread man or woman, boy or girl. Could call him Manny. Manny? Manny, gingerbread man. <laughs> okay. 
names. I'm terrible at naming things. I can hardly even name pets. <laughs> okay. Cat. <laughs> How about Steph? Stephanie, do you have a name for your gingerbread character? Oh. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't get what you said for the name. I didn't either. I think you're muted too much. Oh. Maybe unmute yourself. What, what name did you suggest? What name uh, should we name the gingerbread woman? Um, She's good at naming things, so. Lila. 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 Did you hear that? Lila. Okay. And uh, I don't know your name, but you have blonde hair and you're on Jason's iPad. Do you have a name for your gingerbread character? Lily. Lily. Lila, Lily. Okay. And the Mileses? Sugar. Sugar. I like that one. Or we can try a different spelling. Sugar. <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> That's bad. S-H-U-G-E-R. Shuggy. But Shuggy. Okay, John, what about you? <laughs> Help us out here. Um, I said Henry. Henry? I'm, I'm bad, yeah, I'm bad at naming things as well. I don't know, Henry's a good name. They're all good names. Okay, so we've got a nice list of names. We got possibilities of what could be going on. Um, before we come up with a title, let's try and get some background in, which means, do we show what's chasing our creature? our sugar, sugar creature, or do we keep it as a mystery? And that can be shown in the title, like, uh, you know, what the maybe that's what we'll do is we'll go with the title now and then we can fill in the background after. So if we've got a name of our character, which is really good to put in a title because it personalizes our character and makes them like you are closer to them than if you just said the sugar bread, the gingerbread girl. You know, to say Lila and the, the um, race for the, I don't know. Anyways, let's think of some titles. How about it? Delane, come on, I know you got a title in there. I was just thinking, Lily and Lila are such cute names. It wouldn't be neat if they could be like twin sister gingerbreads or something. It could be. Now that's a really good idea. Oh. Maybe Lily is on Shout the run and she has to go back and save Lila. Yeah. Lila mm -hmm. is going to get baked yeah. or eaten. That's fun. What'd you say? That snowstorm. The the what snowstorm? I'm sorry, you're clicking in and out. Stephanie. Bad snowstorm. The bad snowstorm. So it could be ginger, ginger's bad snowstorm. In which case we need to learn to draw some good looking snowflakes, I think. So we'll get to that, but let's think of some more stories. So we got Lily and Lila. And whatever adventures that we can think of for titles for Lily and Lila and their twins. So I'll put that in parentheses, twins. And then we've got um, whoever, it could be uh, Henry and the Bad Snowstorm is another title. And the Bad Snowstorm. Okay, how about another title? Somebody who hasn't had a chance yet. Ow. 
Is that Natalie that's up? Is that you, Natalie, the blonde? That's you. Hi, Natalie. Um, do you have any ideas for a uh, title? No? Okay. Anna, you want to give it a shot? Uh, Sugar's Close Call. Sugar's Close Call. Mm. That's really good because we don't know what that close call is. And if we show her like, whoa, in a, in a tough situation, but we don't know what's going on, it will make us want to pick up the book and read it. So that's a really good title. Sugar's Close Call. What about you, John? I'm thinking, can we come back to me for a I'll minute? You. Sure. Um, okay, so if we take Sugar's Close Call, what do you think happens in Sugar's Close Call? Do you wanna, do you wanna go a little further with it, Anna? Or would you want- Maybe we see, see like attached to my idea, which Sugar's Close Call could accidentally, she was trying to, help but then she accidentally got caught in a bad snowstorm and then she had to try to go and save herself yeah well close herself. Call in a bad snowstorm could be an avalanche uh mm -hmm. a close call could be kidding. with a polar bear oh yeah yeah um one of the things you could have is a big snout coming onto the page with big teeth that's kind of scary. I don't know if I want to do that, but it's, it doesn't show us that it's a bear. It could be the abominable snowman. It could be a polar bear. So there's uh, an idea that there's another big creature involved. Okay. Um, sugar's close call. Lily and Lila could be a uh, gingerbread uh, characters who escaped out of the kitchen and went to go help Santa's elves make toys and something happens. And now one of the twins is maybe lost in the snowstorm. So that kind of goes in with the snowstorm idea too. So how about if we practice some snowflakes because I think that's gonna be a good uh, background picture. So with snowflakes, you know, you could, you could Google them on your computer and look at different designs and they can be very, very busy. So one of the things that you could do is, um, I do different kinds of snowflakes. Sometimes I just go crisscross like this, and then I crisscross again, but maybe a little longer. And then I do arrows, maybe on the short ones, two arrows each. And then maybe on the long ones, I do a big diamond shape. Snowflakes are really fun to make. And then maybe you can have little pieces sticking out here and here and here and here. So there's that kind. Another kind of snowflake is if you base it on a circle. So if you do a circle like this, you can do Something like this. And then here you can just do little cross crosses. And then maybe circles in the in between them all. And then maybe inside here you could do shapes like that and then have more dots and another circle 
Or sometimes I do snowflakes that are a swirl like this. And then I just make them like they are shining. What did you guys try and figure out your own kind of snowflake shape? So many things you can do. You do a star shape. And then maybe have it have more points. And then maybe they have shapes inside of the big star. And then maybe there's a crisscross in the middle. Are you supposed to try to make them with six sides or is that not important? I think you can do whatever you want. Make it how many sides you want. Sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. Snow is the limit. <laughs> Each one is different. Yeah. They're all different. Let's see. Um, another one you can do is shaped on the diamond shape. Like that. And you can cross like this. And then you can do circles on the end. And maybe and then more circles in here. And then maybe and then this can be Snowflakes are really fun. You just kind of keep pushing your imagination to try and put more and more geometric shapes together. And they don't have to even be geometric, but if you get like stumped and you don't know what to do next, throw a diamond shape in there or a triangle. Um, here, we'll do a triangle one. So you could do a triangle that way and look what happens, you can do a triangle this way. And then maybe you repeat the triangle that way. And repeat the triangle this way. And it makes for some really interesting shapes. And if you want, you can connect these in the middle, it looks like jewels. And then you can Go all around. You know, the other thing I want to talk to you about also is, you know, we're drawing in pencil a cold winter scene. So what are the best colors to use for cold winter scenes? What would be the best colors? Yes, Stephanie. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, actually, my name's Sadie. Sadie, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, you could put a snowman and an igloo and Santa Claus. Yes, about colors, babe. Oh, oh, what kind of colors would you do besides white? Um, you blue. could all, you could do um really really light blue. Blues are really and, good for colors and if, for winter scenes. And if you Christmas scenes, you could do um, red and green, because yep, usually that's, that's the most cool. But this is just an outside yep. picture. So we're gonna, we're gonna uh, think about blues, all different kinds of blues. So we've got Snowstorm, but let's put our title in before we do our, um, draw in our snowflakes, okay? So uh, you guys need to pick out a title. I don't know which ones you like, but I think uh, Sugar's Close Call is, is a good one for me because it's not too long. And it shows Sugar's in trouble, but we don't know why. And it makes us wanna read the story. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Sugar's close call. So yeah, sugar's close. Uh, we could do one big line of type that says sugar's close call right across the top, or you could go sugar's close call, but I think that's going to squeeze it too much. So what I think I'm going to do is sugar's close call all in one line across the top. Okay. So this is how I make it. So it doesn't run off the page. Have you ever tried doing it? Like if you look at this one, I wrote Henry and the bad snowstorm, but I wasn't going to fit snowstorm on that line because I was going to go off the page, right? So I snuck it in underneath. Well, I don't want to do that to our nice title. So what I'm going to do is sugar's close call. I want to make it fit on the page. So this is what I do. I'm going to count all the letters in the spaces between the words. I'm going to divide it in half so I know where the middle is. And then I'm going to work from the middle out and the middle out that way to fit the whole title on there. So here, I'm gonna count first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is a space. I'm gonna make a little mark there so I know. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there's 17 letters and spaces total. And half of 17 is eight and a half. So I'm gonna count over eight and a half. I know I've got seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half would put the middle right about here. So here is the middle and I'm gonna capitalize the C. And then I'm gonna do lowercase, close. Call with another capital C. I'm going to bend down a little because I'm going to get to the end of the page. So we're going to have kind of an arc here. So I got to make sure when I go this way, I arc to about the same spot, which would be about there. So I've now got to get sugars. So S apostrophe. Notice how I'm going backwards. Sugars. A, G, U, it's going to be close guys, S, oh, I squeezed it in, sugar's close call. Now you guys can do any kind of title you want, you don't have to do what I did, but one of the things I'd like to do is to block them, turn them into block letters. So I'm just going to make them fatter. So another thing that I can do to my letters to make them really stand out is you remember how I made my sugar, my sugar character um, kind of 3D looking with making it thick? I'm gonna make my letters look thick too, just like sugar. So I'm gonna anywhere below and off to the right, I'm going to thicken. So it's kind of cool, it looks like. It 
just makes the type stand out a little better. So you don't have to color it in with your pencil either. When you go to color, you can just use like a dark blue or if you have a night scene and you color in your sky area or behind the type, behind the title, you would probably want to do a really bright, like maybe an orange or a yellow color for the lettering, right? because that's gonna really jump out off a dark blue background. So that's something to think about. A dark blue background behind our character. Maybe as you come forward and you see this part of the snow, we, you know, we have an awful lot of room down here. Do you think our little character needs a sidekick? I think there's room for a little sidekick who's running along with them. Yeah, I got a thumbs up over there from Sadie. Uh, Sadie, do you have an idea about a sidekick for our sugar? We should check our sidekick. Maybe it can be like salt since sugar and salt are opposite from each other. Like that could be something a good salty, match. like a pretzel. Like that salt. Could be, that could be the name of the character, but what kind of creature could it be? It could be a pretzel since that's what's not since gingerbreads are sugar. Salt. I love that like, idea. Salty. Let's make salty the pretzel. Sugar and salty the pretzel. The adventures of sugar <laughs> and salty. Great idea, Sadie. Okay, I have to practice a pretzel because it's been a long time since I've drawn a pretzel. Okay, so as I as I recall, you could have pretzel rods, or you can have I like the one that really speaks a pretzel shape, which is that it goes like this and like this, right? And then it attaches to go like that. I'm making this up as I go along. So maybe this one crosses over that one. I don't know, does it go like that and like that? And then you would have the little salty, they would be white bits of salt. Now, how do we make him we can make his eyes here. His legs. He needs eyes, arms, and legs to be running with his to be running with his master. Master? Friend. Friend. <laughs> like that? Mm -hmm. Or and then maybe he's skiing. Maybe he's cross-country skiing. How about that? We'll give him some skis. <laughs> And he's got little arms with his ski poles. Oops, going the wrong way. Okay, that looks good for Salty. Let's draw him in. He, he needs some poles to be helping him to Yes, to he's ski. got poles right there and right there. So you okay. need a hat. He needs a hat. Oh, he needs a hat? Okay. You guys draw your own version of, of the hat on Salty. It needs to be Santa Claus, and this is a wintery scene. 
Okay, so here's salty. Now remember when you color him in, you have to leave his, the salt part's got to be white, like you might use some white dabs of paint to do the salt after you finish coloring them in. You know what I mean? Kind of needs that. You don't want to do dark dots for salt. So I'm just going to like do little chunks of salt. And then I'm going to give him the same worried eyes. Actually, maybe he's not that scared. Maybe he's just loving going skiing. I don't know, what do you think? What is Salty's job in this story? What does he do for sugar? So I'm gonna make him happy. He's having a good old time. I'm gonna make his little arms coming out. He's got mittens on. Boy, if he gets wet, what happens to him if he gets wet? He turns to mush, doesn't he? Oh, poor Salty. His salt melts the snow. <laughs> His salt melts the snow. There's a part of a story. So how can he help uh, sugar? Maybe sugar gets caught in a in an avalanche. And, and then he and then he and then he put puts his then he falls into it the snow and and melts all the snow. And he's <laughs> able to get that dig poor sugar out of the out of the snow, right? Because he used his salt. But what else happens to him? He gets all mushy, and he turns to a puddle of pretzel mush. So he sacrificed himself for his friend. So what does Shuggy do? She gathers up the pretzel mush and then does what? Goes back to the oven and rebakes him. Could that happen? Yeah, why not? Okay, there's the other ski pole. And I gotta make sure I've got a lot of salt. Maybe that's the thing about salty is that he has so much salt on him that people don't like to eat him because he's just too salty. But he ends up being the hero of the story, doesn't he? So you gotta make sure you have lots of salt on there. Now remember, you've gotta paint him in brown for a nice, a uh, light brown pretzel and then put white paint dots on him for salt and you gotta have a lot of salt because I think that's important to the story, right? So he's got his little ski boots on. And then here come his skis. And there's his little tracks. All right. I feel like a story is coming out of this. What do you think, Natalie? What do you think happens in the story? Uh-oh. What happened? An error. Um, yeah. Are you guys still there? Sugar falls down the the snow hill, so um, so Salty has to come down and save him on his skis. Oh, okay. All right. How do we get back? I don't know. Oh, here. Camera. There we go. Hi again. So what did you say, Natalie? Sorry. 
sugar can can fall down the hill and then salt can come down the hill and save her on her skis. Yeah. He brushes all her salt down to find her underneath all the snow. Such a good idea. And that's Sugar's close call, right? Which so shows you you should never go out in the snow, deep, deep snow, without a friend. It's two of you, right? Just in case. Okay, so. All right, so we'll make this like a mountainy, snowy background. And now we have a space down here where we can put sign our names. So I want to say bye. And my name, Jay Rogers. Uh, if you want, you could spell your whole name out. But let's throw some nice snowflakes in here to really make it festive and wintry. So remember the snowflake shape. So get out your, oh, I'm gonna turn mine upside down see if it makes it any different. No, not really. But anyway, so I'm gonna do some snowflake shapes. I'm gonna do this kind of snowflake and then little tiny ones. And then I can make the big fancy kind that we were working on. Because when you're close up to snowflakes, they look big like this. But when you're far away, they just look like little blobs, don't they? And you want to show that there's close up snowflakes and, and far away snowflakes. We've got snowflakes that go like this. All different shapes and sizes. And crystals. Little snowflakes and bigger snowflakes. Oh, you know what another cool thing we could do with the type? Oh, I'm so excited. We could pretend that the snow is laying on top of the type. Now watch mm -hmm. how I do that. So I make the top of the letters have like a little pile of snow on them anywhere that the snow could sit and pile up on them. So when you go to color everything in, this could be like a really light blue or even just white on an orange or a yellow color for the lettering. And then the background could be a nice dark blue and then light blue snowflakes or white. If you can find some white paint and then you can paint the snowflakes in white on top of a dark blue background. If you don't have white paint, you have to leave the white of the page. Oh, it looks sugar coated, doesn't it? Oh, I love this look. Big pile of snow on our letters. More snow. I love doing night scenes 
If you draw a little house in the background, you can draw a little tiny house in the background with big snow on the roof. And if you draw a little window and make that window really bright orange or yellow inside the window and the rest of the building look like it's dark blue or light blue on the dark background, then there will be this beautiful glowing, warm inside looking room inside the house. So remember that inside the windows, orange or yellow, the house can be brown and the can be the snow light blue. What'd you say, Sadie? It needs smoke. It With needs smoke what? coming out. Needs chimney. smoke on a chimney, Chim of course. Gosh, thank you. Okay, here's a chimney and here's a smoke. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. Okay, so we need more snowflakes. That was a snow monster face. How'd I do that? Okay. That's a weird looking snowflake. I'm going to make it contained more. There we go, that's better. <laughs> and if you want, you can carry the snowflake shapes down into the lower part of the drawing. All right, you guys. So we've got a lot of busy stuff going on up here. So let's do some more snowflake shapes down here. Sugar's close call. Or it could be salty saves the day. Right? <laughs> Any other ideas for our story? Oh yeah, can you hold your work up close to the camera so I can see? Oh, Sam's close call. Oh, Natalie, that's so nice. Natalie, is that a new, new sketchbook you got for Christmas? From your grandma, I bet, huh? Yeah, nice going. Hi, Emma. Have you been there the whole time and I haven't seen you? Yeah, I have. <laughs> Did you make a drawing? Yeah, I was still making the snowflakes. I my internet I uh, logged me off, so oh, I no. I missed some of it. But I I I draw the snowman and I made us. Um, I didn't do salty. I did a candy cane instead. Oh, that's a good idea, candy cane sidekick. I love that. Nice job. Okay, and what about Sadie? You want to show us your artwork? What was his name? Oh, she wants to know what the candy cane sidekick's name is. So yeah, she Emma, that's a good idea. Emma, um, you... I think I should be named Candy. Candy. Pepper. <laughs> pepper, as in pepper. Pepper. <gasps> pepper. <laughs> pepper. 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 Peppermint. Peppermint. Nice. See, oh, we were drawing yeah. snowflakes. Beautiful. We like to know. 
We're going to draw a million jelly snowflakes when we're done with this. So, yeah, we're drawing them. Good. How about those miles, kids? You guys got pictures you want to show us? Oh, look at him, Anna. He's wonderful. That looks like, uh, okay, now I can see it's the faint with the, your, your uh, little salty is really good. And let, I can't see the title. Can you drop it down just a little bit? Sugar's close call. Very nice. You too, John. Love it. Really nice. Okay. And then we haven't seen Delans or who's under Delan? Maybe that's uh, Shiloh. Is that Shiloh? That is, I guessed right. Is that you? Yeah. Do you, do you want to show us your drawing? Oh, good going. I like how you use the bottom of the page to put your title in too. You spread it out. Looks good. And then we have down next to Shiloh, I don't know your name. Uh, you're with maybe your mom. Uh, do you want to show us your drawing? Is that Chloe? Or Cecilia? Delan, do you want to show us your drawing? Oh, nice job, Delan. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for, for your guidance. guidance. Thanks for your help and guidance. It was a lot of fun. Anybody who hasn't shown their drawing would like to show their drawing? Haven't. Yeah, Emma, you want to show us? Oh, good job. Looked like you um, striped your uh, letters like a candy cane. Did you do that? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Can you hold that up again close to the camera so everybody can see that? So there you go. Really nice job, Emma. Okay. I think Thank that's you, it. Jackie. Thanks, everybody. Thank this was really fun. Thank you. Now remember to color in your beautiful pictures and uh, anything else that you can think of to continue your story, make more illustrations, maybe even write it out uh, in, into a picture book. Um, there's usually 32 pages, but you might be able to get away with 24. And um, See if you can make your story go for a whole 24 pages. That would be awesome. Have fun. Start and your new year out with yeah. a new book. Yeah. <laughs> make a book during your break. Yeah. At least have fun with it. All thank, right. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks, everybody. See you. Thank you, Jackie. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. Happy, Happy New, new year, year, everyone. Academy.